to be or not to be or to do? That is the question. What chickens. are you doing, Rick? Well, I'm practicing our podcast. It's on to be versus to do. You're crazy. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. J. Good morning, Mr. J. We have our beverages, which you're we're doing because it is morning this time. It is morning this yeah, time. Yeah, it is. But getting close to well, it's still morning. Yep. So um our podcast today is going to be about to be or not to be. That is the question. Or is it to do or to not do? Yes. All right. So um the other thing is the last podcast we talked about is um, the about preloaded software because we all come with preloaded stuff and from denominations we already talked about it so it's really important at, to, for all of us to somehow like clear the deck and let the Bible just speak to us. That's a big biblical principle and it's easy to say but hard to do. Yeah, it, it really is. Because you have to really search and ask the Lord to reveal things to you that you don't even know are there that are skewed just from your upbringing, from the church you may have gone to, from experiences and trauma in your life, those types of things. Exactly. And uh, I'm just going to slightly adjust the camera. Okay. So, um, yeah, because a lot of times we hear verses like it's the Lord's... Um, uh, he gives us the desires of our heart. And when we hear that, it's really important to make sure we go read that in context because right. it may not mean what we, it's like, because when we hear that, it's like, oh, he's going to give me everything I want. Well, that's not the case. So right. that's that's right. an example it's, of preloading. It's not the case, and it's um, usually we don't realize that that's not the case unless you're in the Word of God. Um, you mm -hmm. learn real quick that you don't want the dire desires of your heart. You want the dire desires of God's um, heart and please help us, Lord, please help me to have that desire to want what you want, not what I want. You know, I hate to say this, but that was actually quite brilliant to say. And you know why I say that? Because I hadn't ever thought about it that way in particular. Maybe we just don't want the desires of our heart. Be, because if they don't line up with God's will, it's going to be a disaster. Right. So in other words, maybe we don't want to know what the desires of God's heart are because they might not line up with the desires of our heart. Yep. That's really good. And uh, I wasn't trying to be facetious on my comment or sarcastic either, because it was a good comment, because I really hadn't thought about it that way. Okay, so um, remember, these are Bible studies. So we're, we're trying to have some fun with our Bible studies, remaining very reverent. Um, so we're going to start going through Ephesians. We just did our last podcast, and it was on preloaded software. We already said that. But grab a link for this Bible study down below. And um, you can actually follow along with us. Um, the other thing that we really would appreciate is if you comment, like, and subscribe. Um, if you go on Apple iTunes and Google and all those, let them know that you uh, like what we're doing. Because uh, what that does is it actually drives us up on YouTube and stuff like that. And more folks will see. Right. And our whole purpose is not to be... We want to be seen by a lot of people, but not be just because we want to be seen by a lot of people. We want to be able to um, show the average pew setter, like we say, that there's hope and that um, they don't have to be afraid of going into the Word of God, that you don't have to be a scholar or a theologian, that, mm -hmm. uh, like we've said so many times, the Holy Spirit can lead you and train you and lead you to the right people. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. This is great coffee, by the way. What What is it? It's espresso. From Starbucks. Starbucks? Oh, yeah. But, I mean, I didn't buy it at Starbucks, but, yeah. Okay. Some people some people think it tastes bitter, but try the espresso because that's, uh, if you like dark roast, because it's a very um, flavorful coffee. Yep, it is. Okay. 
So here we go. So to be or not to be, or to do or not to do. That's kind of our question. So if you don't mind, would you read those th next three verses? Now, I'm including verse three just for context, um, because in context is important. So we'll belt that out. Okay. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intentions of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Okay, there is a ton that we have to unpack on this. Now, this podcast is not designed um, for packing all unpacking and packing in all, all kinds of theology. What, um, because there's this, this right here, this verse has Calvinism in it. it it's got all these different um, flaws. I was told by a theologian not to do this. But I said, because I went to regular secular college in, in my 40s, and I loved philosophy class. And this, their philosophies, if you adopt the philosophy of anyone, Kant or anybody else, I think we mentioned this in the podcast, you can get back into a corner. Well, that's the same thing with Calvinism. Calvinism or Wesleyanism, whoever your isn't, I mean, um, <laughs> Uh, that's a to you know a, a to do. Um, the thing is, is that we don't want to get caught up in that. We want me and you as a pew sitter to how are we looking at this? And so, um, so we're that's what we're going to unpack here. I love verse three from this perspective. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who bless us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. I'll be honest with you. I wish I knew what all that meant, and I wish that I could sit down with Paul. And we and we, and we have to go into scripture, other scriptures, because scripture interprets scripture. Um, I would love to have sat down with him and said, "What were you saying?" Mm -hmm. I mean, the guy, the guy, it, he was either so far above us. Um, and this is where a danger point comes in. But he had the same Holy Spirit with us. Right. And we didn't have the same learning that he has. But how, Lord, can you help us interpret that? But regardless, we have blessings in heavenly places. And so my guess is it kind of goes back to the garden, do you think? That maybe... Adam was blessed in the heavenly places too, because look what God God did with them. Well, and it's and uh, the first blessed in three um, translates um, the definition as well spoken of and blessed. So he right off the bat is used Bible study company. I used Bible study company for that, but right off the bat, he is um, giving honor to to God right off. Right off the bat, in the beginning of the um, Ephesians one, you know, saying that he's speaking well and highly of God. Right. Yeah, and we talked about being blessed to do His will and for His pur purpose. And I just think it's the, I just think it's the coolest thing ever that a God would make us and then say to us sentient beings and if you don't know what a sentient being or if you haven't heard that before it just means we're thinking doing we have our own will um and we get to choose him and i i that that and and without his help in him be, revealing himself to us we don't have a lot of hope but i'm so glad well, that he revealed our, us that's what our our blessing is that we that he we have the opportunity to have revelation mm -hmm. from God. Yep. The mere man has the opportunity to have revelation from God. That's a blessing. Right. And I and what's really cool about this our podcast and our study of the Bible is God keeps opening like I mean I don't want to use onion layers, but I I it's like it it, it 
I guess the way to look at it is we realized one day that if God could speak the universe into existence, um, how would we understand? How could we understand a mind like that? Well, how could this Bible that's been with us for 2,000, 4,000 years or whatever, he handed us, he's handed his word from that mind. That, that is, and if we look at the Bible that way, that we're exploring his heart, his mind, and his will, I, I, it just well, changes and, everything. And why wouldn't we? I mean, there's people who say, well, you don't need to study the Bible. Um, why do you need to study the Bible? But why why would you not want to study the Bible when it's a book that's from a uh, God that created the universe and we can't understand his mind? The Bible gives us a glimpse of it, but even that, um, it opens up a, a whole new world that we don't understand now. So you can just say, oh, I'm not going to study the Bible because I don't like the cultural things that happened back then or I don't like, you know, that women were put down or not understanding that that is from sin and that it's showing the lives of people and the, the lives of people who um, were sinful at times and the lives of people who found the Lord at times, mm -hmm. the disobedience and the obedience. Um, the behavior of the people and their fallen state has nothing to do with the um, kindness and lovingness of God. Because we're all sinners and broken pottery. Yes. Yep. Broken pottery. I like that term because if we're broken pottery, then we need to give each other leeway. But, but the broken pottery is not God. Well, and we also need to understand. And I think sometimes as Christians, I know for me that's happened before that, we think we're the ones that's supposed to fix somebody else's broken pottery. Right. And that's not the only way we can fix somebody else's broken pottery is point them to Christ. Um, we can't, we can't fix anything. No. You know, no. and some of, sometimes I think we've taken to our own account and our own strength. Okay. We're going to do this and this and this to do's to yeah. um, help somebody when that might not be what the Lord is wanting us to do we might be we actually might be taking them out of his hands his hands yep. and and adding more cracks and more holes in their pottery than um what they already have right exactly and we can go down rabbit trails on that yeah um Are you saying i went down a rabbit trail no i'm just saying no 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 i i could go down a rabbit trail <laughs> i was gonna head down that way mm -hmm. so um all right so let's take a look at um uh, starting with verse four. So um, let me go back just a hair. So in verse four, it says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. So um, it's really interesting to me, because if we look at this, it says that he created us for himself. Okay. Thus, if we take that we can see the character of God. And that's one of the things that we try to do in Bible study, especially in Psalms, is finding the character of God. So, yes, we all know he's a loving father, but when you actually see it, he chose us. And I think that is very, very powerful. Well, and when you actually see that his intention was that we would be holy and blameless, he didn't want bad for us. He didn't want us to choose. Um, mm -hmm. you know, evil or brokenness. His intent is kind and loving. Yeah. And um, so, but he wants us to be holy um, from the foundation of the world. He wants us to be holy and blameless. Well, he's going to help us get there. That That is what I'm taking from this verse. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, yes. Because um, I know once we've submitted our hearts to the Lord, not perfectly by any means, and his word, trying to walk this out, trying to ask him for help, our whole life has changed. It's almost like the presence of the Lord is around us, and we don't ever want to leave that. It's so precious. It's not even funny. In fact, what's really interesting is we have a, we, you and I have a saying called the dehydrated soul. When we don't, when we feel like we're getting too much 
on our own in our in our own flesh, either one of us or both of us together, because we can do it together, you kind of start feeling pretty dry. Yeah. You know, and it and I think the Lord's probably saying, Well, if you don't need my help, I'll just pull right mm-hmm. back. Well, and I think the dehydrated soul dehydrated soul is a good picture for me anyway of I you know, I mean I think of I think of as a sponge that's shaped like a heart that's just completely dried out. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then water going over it and it filling back up it's a good picture for me on what i what i feel like inside when i'm when i have a dehydrated soul yeah and what's interesting to me is that again it's the com- contrasting and comparison of to do we get into to do's mm-hmm. we get into more flesh stuff and that's just a spiritual term for just working in our own will mm-hmm. and um and and so and rather than to be and recognizing who he is. So we'll talk more about that later. But so what's really cool that he is our real father as compared to our earthly fathers. In one sense, he used our earthly fathers to get us here. And so if we recognize him being our regular father, then we know that he's going to move us towards being holy and blameless. I think that's just so cool. It should be an encouragement. Right. Hey, I've got hope. I've got hope that he wants to make us successful. Right, no matter what we've done in our past, what, no matter what's happened, um, his hope for us is is that we would come turn to him and be um, healed. Exactly. And I like what Vody Bachman said yesterday about the grace of God. As a terrible sinner, I'm one. I have things in my past. And... Would I like all those to disappear and would I like not to have those to ha- have happened said, or hurt people? Not to remember them. Right. But I want to remember them, not live in them, but I want to remember because of his massive grace mm-hmm. towards us. And I and I appreciated that a lot. Right. And he, he said it gave him um, confirmation of and remembrance of how much the Lord has done for him yep. and how far he's brought him yep, and, and how far, how much farther he's going to bring him if right. he, you know, continues to walk with the Lord. Yeah. And let's not live in the past. Let's learn from the past and move forward because God is not on linear time. He sees it all, but he can, he can help restore the, the past, not fix the past, but he can help us learn from the past and then bless others. And I think it's really important, and we've talked about this before, that we don't force other people to um, live in the past. Right. You know that we that we have grace and we have forgiveness. Um, that doesn't mean that you don't talk about things or you sweep things under the rug, but that you don't force or turn somebody else that's past has haunted them. That you don't pour you know fuel on the fire. That you. Um, give them the grace and the forgiveness that the Lord would give us if they're in a repentant state. Yeah. And and I absolutely had experiences where somebody would bring something up from 25 years ago. And I'm like, we're, we're way past that. Well, and we can all, but we don't want, we we can all do that. We can all do that. You know, when we get angry or, you know, if something bad happens, it's like, we've always said, it's easier to, to, feel anger about something and to recognize that you may actually be sad about something. So exactly. You, you put your focus on somebody and, um, you know, attack them in your mind or in your heart because you're sad about something instead of d- dealing with, right. you know, just dealing with the sadness. Right. So what we want to take out of this first, which I really appreciate your saying that, he chose us to be with him, worship him, and serve him. That should be... That is a great comfort to me. Yeah. It really is. So he's on our side to see this happen. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say you're somebody's listening to the podcast and they're like, ah, these people are just crazy. They're, you know, they're just religious. They're just doing all this stuff. We're talking straight up relationship. Right. We're not talking if if I was to meet you. And uh, and I would say, oh, man, I like this girl. I want to spend time with her. This is what, it, the more I got to know you, the more I wanted to spend time with you. And then 
Um, I mean, what, three weeks after we met, I asked you to marry me. You know, that's a little fast, even for you. So, um, but the issue is, I knew that I wanted to spend time with you. This is the same thing that happened to me when I got saved. Here, I had no concept of God, and now he's in the room. And this is, I knew that this was God, and I had no concept of him before. So I don't care what anybody says to me that God exists. They can argue until they're blue in the face. He's standing right here. Well, I got kind of scared, because, too, because we're accountable to this God. I better get to know him. Right. And the more I've gotten to know him over the years, like Vody Bachman said, how wonderful, gracious, merciful, kind he is to us. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to offend him. Right. Yeah. And the, the opposite of that is that you also see what it, the intent of his heart is to be gracious and kind and loving to you he's also i've said this before a just god and yeah. um and he he won't tolerate sin well and the thing is 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 we get saved but adam and eve um you know they god warned them that they could be separated from him if they chose to sin what was that i don't know so anyway, what something happened. It might have been our birdie. Yep. So um, sorry about that, folks. Uh, but anyway, um, what, what was my point? Oh, if we continue in sin as believers um, rejecting God's word, we talked about this in the last podcast, we're going to get really dehydrated and we're going to, and, and the Lord will pull back. If we choose to sin, he'll pull back until we're ready to come back. Mm -hmm. And he'll even add some negative circumstances. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is if we don't go through this negative circumstances with him, then we can get mad at him. Yeah, or or even if they're not negative circumstances that he's allowed or caused, um, just the consequences of sin and not wanting to let's let's say it's a child who's angry at something that you did as a parent the consequences of sin that i may have caused or you may have caused um might come up in the the future from the past those are consequences but we don't get angry and blame it on god we re we accept responsibility for it also knowing that the lord is forgiving and has forgiven us and washed us clean with his blood so we can set boundaries up for people who attack your past or if there's anybody out there in that situation um that we can set boundaries so that your past is not still attacking you because you're you're um forgiven by you know christ it's a it's a terrible lack of love to to for for any type of relationship you want to destroy a relationship just keep bringing up the past that's right. what you're saying really well right and because this is i mean the lord made a way for adam and eve and i mean we get they get brought up that the con their consequence of sin is they get brought, brought up, up a lot forever yeah. forever you know yeah. but god made a way for for to be repaired so there if he made a way for through christ through christ um then he made a way for for them there he took what they did and made a way for us um to come back to him and that's what he does with our sin too i mean yep. our sin if we repent and turn back to him and um have a relationship with him he uses our experience from our sin to help others who maybe have fallen into that sin Right, which always amazes me because I don't think I deserve to be helping anyone. Right, we none of us deserve to. Right, because that's that's the whole. I think that's the whole key, and and looking at this in scripture, that it's not about us helping. It's us about it's about us turning our hearts back to the Lord and and asking, "What's your will for me? What's exactly. your will for that person?" And help me to point that person to you. Yep. That's where the healing comes. Yeah, in Psalm 51, David says it brilliantly where he, he's caught in what he was go, what, with Bathsheba and um, called out. And then he says, 
I want to, I want, please forgive me, return back to me. Don't take your Holy spirit. And then, and then he says, so I can teach others not to do this. Hmm. I, I just think that's um, absolutely fantastic. But the, the issue is he's given us in this scripture, he wants us to be holy and blameless. He wants us to, to so we don't have to go through, in other words, we don't have to go through the pain that we create for ourselves. Right. Right. With his help. Okay. So this is his will for us. In Acts, it says he commands all men to repent. And we keep, keep hearing about repentance all the time. That's a change of mind, but it's also a change of heart. And sometimes we ask to ask the Lord, yes, I need to repent, but I don't want to. Honesty. Yeah. yeah be honest and as brutal honest with yourself and others. As Well, be careful about others because they don't always need to hear well, everything. Well, no. Yeah. But I mean, you know, to be honest with the Lord that. Yeah. Honest with know, the Lord. Yeah. I don't want to change. It, yep. This is feeding something that I like, and I know it's wrong, but um, I don't want to change. Can you please, can you please change me? Right. Can you help me to change? Right. And we talked about free will. It's we have free will to choose to love him or not love him. That was the same thing with the angels. They had free will at one point, and a third of them fell. Um, Adam and Eve had free will, and they fell. And um, we have an opportunity today under grace. He's given us the ability to, to really learn how to move towards the spirit in a gentle way. And then when the millennial kingdom is set up, he himself will reign and rule over the earth. And yet a bunch of people at the end are going to turn, even though they can see him. Yeah. So we, that's our hope right now is to be or not to be mm -hmm. right and to do or not to do so um all right so uh verse five you want to read that he predestined us to adoption as sons through jesus christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved i think that is awesome because um, we need, we, we, I love the fact that we get adopted into the family of God. I think that's really cool. And, and that he um, predestined us for that. I think I've talked about this before on one of the podcasts, but that he predestined us to adoption. So he made a way before we were even born to be his child. Exactly. And the and and people get twisted up on the predestined that you don't even have like a choice to be saved. It's just totally ridiculous, because um, God knows all possible outcomes because He's outside of space and time. He can see the past, He can see the future, and He can order everything the way He wants to. He's in total control, except we're not. And so, what's so cool about it is we don't know. And we don't know, but we do know the choices that we can make mm -hmm. right now. And somebody would say, well, yeah, but I don't have to follow God because I've got, you know, he knows that the outcome is. Let's not all get twisted up on this. Yeah. We have a choice. Yeah. Or I, I can just, I can, I can go sin and ask God for forgiveness because I've got the grace. Um, yeah, you can go do that, but it's still a poor choice. Really poor choice. Yeah. So, um, but the thing is, is that it's a by his kind intention. That's what this said, his kind intention of his will. And that that's another character trait of God is that he is kind and his intention towards us is his will. And his will is always good. The problem with his will is it is always opposed to our will. <laughs> and hopefully. Right. Because he's opposed to sin. Exactly. So it's not that he doesn't want us to be separated. Right. From I him. mean, it's it's such a good picture. The you know the family and like a mother's heart. Yep. Um, it's you know a, a mother's heart is always wants good for their child and wants you know the best for him and worries about him and all these different things. And as mothers, we're still broken. So we that's just a little minute. Um 
feeling that we can have of what the Lord wants for us. He's not broken. He's whole. He's God. Yep. So yep. Um, if we can even make a, a little general comparison of a mother's heart or a father's heart to their child, um, that's just a small portion of what he wants for us. Yeah, exactly. And I was just thinking the other day, the Lord said, take up your cross daily. And, you know, here's an execution. You know, it's like, go to the electric chair every day. And it's like, okay, I don't even know how to apply that. But I, but today when we were preparing for the podcast, it kind the kind of thought was, wait a minute, if I, if I take on his will, then I'm automatically taking my will to the cross. Right. It's not going to be perfect. But and what you're doing is in that, I mean, it's kind of weird, weird when you said that, the, you know, go to the electric chair or, you know, die to to die to self every day. Cause in our physical minds, we look at it as death, but in our spiritual minds, it's life. Right. You know, for us to go to him daily and um and sacrifice our own will in the world's eyes is death and um in some people's eyes it would be that you're uh man you sure don't have much fun in your life do you because you're you won't do any of these things that you maybe used to do yeah you but, sure wake up with a hangover <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. but in the but in the spiritual sense like and we say in the kingdom mindset going to do that is what is is really bringing us life well, right and so i think the question that the lord is really asking too is if you want my will especially on earth you're going to have a better life you might not avoid suffering but it you're going to go through everything with him i'd rather go through my life with god um but in in your inheritance you're investing in your eternal inheritance right. the long term not the short term and i think that's what he's basically saying is you're going to be in conflict. We saw that with Adam and Eve. We see this throughout the Bible. People's conflict is with God's will or our will. So if we just recognize that and then ask him for help, being brutally honest, it'll be, we'll move towards his kind intention. Right. And then we can walk through any, like we've talked about before, um, any any trial, we can walk through at a, in a way that's better than without him because we're at peace with him. Exactly. And so, but then you're hearing in Ephesians, in, in you know these verses that are coming that we're reading, you're also seeing grace in this. So yeah. Titus 2 defines grace. First, it's Jesus Christ coming because we need salvation and redemption. And just like the Lord provided the Passover lamb, he provided this God himself as the Passover lamb, paid our price for our sin, and then all of a sudden, now he then says, I give you the Holy Spirit to help train you away from ungodliness, mm -hmm. Titus 2, 11 and 12. But what's interesting about it is it's a process. Right. It's learning. And we're going to get into this in just a few minutes, but this is the thing, to do or to be. And that's really the chickens. So, because the chickens are behind us. So, okay. So now we're getting into um, this scripture and we're going to read this scripture from 7 to 14 because we need to pay attention to the in hymns. And the green on the screen there is what we have in him. So again, here's the thing. Is it to be or are we going to to do? Because my, well, well, I'll just. You, you read it. Oh, okay. Okay, everybody. Now remember, if you pull up Bible study company, we're Ephesians 1, 7 through 14. And we're going to read the in hymns. I think it's really neat. So in him, we have redemption. How? Through the through his blood. Why? For the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, completely undeserved. And believe me, he could have pulled the plug on us 
long time ago, back in the garden. Mm -hmm. Well, and actually he did pull the plug on the world at one point. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So which he lavished on us. That's another part of his character is just how gracious and giving and lavishing. In all wisdom and insight, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his kind intention, which he purposed, here we go again, in him. This was all about him, Christ. And what's so cool is if you read the Bible from the very beginning to the end, it's all about Christ. The types and shadows are all there. So verse 10, with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of times. Now let's make a comment about this. This word here is, if you follow through, King James renders it as dispensation. Administration. Mm -hmm. Yep, they, they admit it. They, and so it, a dispensation is the type of administration. So what God does, and we can read the Bible in this manner, that God does certain things at certain times for certain reasons. And so in this me, uh, message, his dispensation for us, in a sense, his administration for us is, is, is Christ coming and it to give us these in hymns. It's suitable to the fullness of the times. He does everything according to his will. That is summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth. Mm -hmm. So again, it's the physical and the spiritual is all about Christ. I'll tell you what, Mary, that takes all the weight off of me. I'm, I'm, I want to, uh, I'm a doer. Okay. I just, I want to do stuff. I want to be out there and I want to accomplish. And, and, uh, and that, that it's about him. So we make it like you said in Exodus 28, one, the Lord sets Aaron aside to minister to me. And it's all about us ministering to him. I'm doing and this. Like I've said before, not, not because he need, needs it, but we do. Yes. You know, yep. I mean, even in that, he's thinking of us and because ministering to him is good for us. Yeah, it's the, yes, and it's the coolest thing. So, let, so let's go. Here we go. So for heavens and earth, in him also we've obtained an inheritance. Oh, you mean to tell me that I might not get an inheritance from my parents? Um or there, and I hope they use their, what, right. yeah. But the thing is, is that I have an inheritance from Christ as a son who I've been adopted. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's crazy. Mind, mind blowing. Yeah, it is. It is having been predestined according to his purpose. So his purpose, knowing mankind, got his purpose was to be like Adam. So that's what he predestined for, is for us. But we still have the choice. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the, the thing is, is that. You mean to be like Adam before we sin? Before exactly. He sinned. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he wants the best for us. Predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will. We got to get that. Certain presidents can come and go. Kings can come and go. Governments can come and go. Persons, because he knows it all. And it's all in his counsel, he knows, to the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory. All of this should start to end our fear. Yeah. It really should. We can rest in him. Mm -hmm. So in him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, because it's about him, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, we were sealed in, in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance. So again, if we, if we put our faith and trust in Christ, put our sins on him by faith, um, believe in his resurrection, that's our inheritance, that he is giving us new life. 
And the most wonderful part about this is every single human being needs this good news. They need this good news. There's no works here. Mm -hmm. And we come into churches, we come into our Christianity, we come into everything, listening to other people without studying scripture ourselves a lot of times, and we end up in a works mode. Have you noticed that? Well, yeah, I have. I have. And it's hard to separate that's a daily thing for for me or any anybody exactly. that's wanting to serve the Lord to separate out, am I doing this for me um, as checkbox or because it makes me feel good and um, but I am not but it's distracting me from my time with the word the word of God mm -hmm. because if we're doing all these different um, services um, and we're not in the word of God and um, and making that our first priority, then all that's just in vain. We're right. And and then when somebody is listening to this, they, they could say, oh, now they're just giving me more stuff to do. Like I have to learn how to study the Bible and all this. Be at peace, everyone. Let the Holy Spirit draw you to this. Exactly. Yep. So, but let's talk about another aspect of in him. So, I was talking to you this morning and I said, what's so cool about this is, and I never understood this because this is what caused me performance-based Christianity and works. I believe that he went to the cross. I got it. He died for my sins. Now what? So then I automatically thought, I got to find stuff to do. And fortunately, the church or unfortunately, the church that I went to um, told me I got to go to church. I got to pray. I got to go to youth group. I got to do all these things. I got to soul win. We've already talked about all this. Thing is, though, is all of my sin haunted me. And, it, and, and then I failed miserably, and it still haunts me. But it doesn't anymore, understanding this. The two little lambs that were slain in Exodus 29 and every day in the temple if I put my faith on those lambs, they would cover me every single day for my sin, morning to end night. So, Lord, I just put my sin on. The Passover lamb came of Christ. Christ was fully righteous, never sinned, voluntarily did God's will to, to become our sacrifice. So now what happened, this is what Paul's saying. We, the blood of Christ covers us. We come under that blood, and it's Christ the Lord sees. This is in Hebrews too. He doesn't even see my sin because we're in Him. We're in Him. It's like, um, like I said to you today. It's like, like a birthday card, an anniversary card. The card is great on the outside, and then it's gone in a sense under in Him in the envelope mm -hmm. until I open it. And so when we get that, that's why in Revelation the people dip their their garments of white which is Christ a picture of Christ we put on Christ his his purity his holiness his everything but it's dipped in blood because it's his blood mm -hmm. so all everyone out there that struggles with regrets with struggles with sin struggles with all of this just turn to the lord and know that he forgives you and he will give you the power to heal all these past memories and everything that you have. Um, you know, you'll still have scars. You, you definitely oh, yeah. will. Like, like I say, you'll, you'll still have scars, but when you look at them, they won't hurt. Right. And I think this part of the podcast is really important because it sets up this next thing. And it's um, actually, I just said all this. Um, so let's just, just, Let's just do this. We started out with two choices on this. The thing is, is that because we're in him, in him, all these in hims, we have these two choices. We can go our own way, or we can choose to, by faith, put our sin under him and get his help in walking this life out, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that means if we're in him, we can worship him in every single thing that comes our way. And be at peace. And be at peace and know that he's trying to teach us something. Because when we come under stress, that's when the crud comes out. Well, and then we can look at, like we said yesterday, um, the te test, when he when it talks about the Lord testing us, that it's um, 
really examining or looking at ourselves, him forcing us to look at ourselves so that we can see what's in us um, and turn to him and he'll help us out of it. Right. Um, instead of viewing it that he's going to see if he can get one over on us. Okay, so I'm going to bring something back to your mem memory. I included in this because we were talking about Jew and Gentile, and you said something which I thought was really profound in the sense that I hadn't thought about it this way again. Um, see why it's really good to study with your spouse? Um, you said, um, I want you to expound on this, to what you meant, but Christ is the equal sign between Jew and Gentile. Yeah, I think it's in Ephesians 2 um, where we'll get to that where too, they're yeah. talking about that and um, circumcision and on circumcised and that circumcision was done with man's hands and that um, Christ came and paid the price and that the Jew and the Gentile um, would be one new man. Right. And I, it just, I mean, I don't know that this was both circumcised in heart. Exactly. Once we both believed in him. Right. But I thought that just seemed like a picture of Adam and Eve um, not being right with the Lord and then um, Christ coming and the picture of the Jews and the Gentiles coming together. One man was like, they're at, they're at peace um, and they're, um, is it anonymity? Mm -hmm. is, Animosity. Mm -hmm. Is gone from each other. Enmity. Yeah, enmity. Yeah. Yep. So when I was reading that, I, that's what I thought. I saw that Jew, Gentile, Christ with an equal sign that um, he brings us back to himself. I think I, I, I love it. And, and it's a big help. So, okay. So um, in him, we have redemption. We have the forgiveness of trespasses. He's lavished his grace, which is the power to do God's will. Um, number 10 is administration or dispensation is the sum of all is Christ. We have an inheritance. We're predestined to do good works in him and do, do good works that he wants us to do. And he wants us all to succeed in his doing his will. Right. Not succeed, um, prosperity, any of that stuff. Whatever, however your journey takes you, he wants it to be about his will. Right. So, um, and then why did the people die in the wilderness? This is what we talked about last last time, but it was because they didn't believe in God's word. And this is what we're struggling with today in the church: is people listen and listen and listen to sermons but they don't actually study scripture for themselves. And that's, hopefully that's what you're seeing is two people who, you know, learn from Dr. Baruch how to study the Bible properly. And now we're studying the Bible properly. Right. Yeah. And we've learned so much because the Holy Spirit is teaching us. Exactly. And the whole, the church is full of prodigals, full of them. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, pray for our brethren. That's what we should say. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, I do want to say this. I had a real struggle with church, churches for many years that said that we were families, um, that we are a family. And a lot of times, if you disagreed in a family, we were experiencing that. If you don't agree, then they'll say out. and Or, or not necessarily out. They may just tear you apart when it, you're not there. Yeah, they may tear you apart when you're not there. But that happens in the church too. Exactly. Is that is that acting like a family? No. Do you go if you're going on the attack in your disagreement? Then you need to look at yourself. But of but I really appreciate the pastor of Christ Community Church here in Ocala that said we're strangers, but we're also family, and he put it into really good context. Mm -hmm. And actually did a healing for me. So um, I, I'm really blown away by that. Now I can readjust my, like I would just say any family, that's any church that said we're family, you know, push back on that. Well, you do need to be cautious. Well, yeah. But, but the way that Nathan did it, well, and, Nathan and did and it was you, good. In, if, if you're looking at it in the, like I say, physical and spiritual, in the physical sense, um, 
that's one thing. But in the spiritual sense, we are family um, because we're all children. Of, if if we're believers, mm-hmm. then you know that's a whole different story. So we are family, and that's why we can be family and and be strangers. Um, but we have that in common. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and I think it's really important that we. I'm I bang it around here. Um, it's important that we recognize uh, oh, the the sense that we are a family and. Because we're broken pottery, let's give everybody some room. And if you see somebody dehydrated when they're broken pottery, you know, encourage them to get filled up where they should get say, filled up. Yeah, don't don't try to yeah put some paste on it yourself. Yeah, um, don't fix them to Christ and let because yeah, he's the only one that can fill them up. So point them to Christ. Right. So this morning I was talking to a friend of mine, and um, I had been talking to Baruch about the law and the place that it has in our life. And his comment to me is always, all the things of the Old Testament, the Mosaic Law, nobody can keep any of that, but we can learn from it. And that's how you and I took it. So I just wanted to confirm that. And my friend said, and it's, uh, I probably shouldn't name him Dave Mills. Um, Dave said, Rick, and because we were together in a church, and it was all about doing stuff and holding holding people up on pedestals and doing what they were doing. And it was always a puzzle to me why we got going down that road. And he made a statement, which I think is profound because it clicked, you know, um, just like your equal sign. The clicking was, Rick, it's in our human nature to always want to do things. Do, 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 do. And then it just struck me, this whole part of Ephesians is about to be. It's to be be believing in Christ, to be dependent on him, to ask the Holy Spirit, to be truthful to him, be truthful in our inward parts, to be submitted to his will, be submitted to his things, not what we do. Right. That's and that's the that's the spiritual part of doing. If you think about it, oh, yeah. um, you Good know, point. To, to be or to do. Um, because there's always How a How come you're getting all these really good points and I'm not? <laughs> well, there's always that, you know, you know, they say what how do they say that about Satan being the um the great the deceiver? Deceiver, but he takes accuser. He, accuser, he takes bit, bits of truth and bits of things in terms of something that God has created and turns it into something that isn't good, but it looks good. So are we going to do in an earthly sense or are we going to do for the Lord, which is um, two different things. In a spiritual sense, we're going we're gonna to minister to the Lord. We're going to go to him and ask for his will. We're going to, if we're going to do something, we should, we should be doing it that way. We should be because we're in him. Right. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And you know what? It just dawned on me too. If you're in a relationship and people are pointing fingers and bringing up the past and accusing and accusing and accusing and you never can get, you never can get anything resolved because it's like, you, you got to realize that that's part of the enemy. Yeah. And Christ says, forgive. Mm-hmm. Let's move on. You know, let's learn from our mistakes and move on. So, okay. So, um, so my point was Ephesians is showing us to be. So, so this podcast is called To Be or Not To Be. So let's take a look at our little summary thing here because we're coming to our end and we don't want to be boring everybody to death. Right. Um, so God is clearly restoring us back to the garden that we said this in our other pad- podcast. He wants... Um, relationships with us, but he wants us to lay down our will and exchange that and in exchange for his. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's where the uh, pick up your cross daily. <laughs> yeah. In. Yeah. Um, so the next one, can you read that one? He will teach us through experiences. Now, I think we need to recognize that. I think as we move forward, that's what this journey is all about. And we're going to encounter all these experiences. Let's go through it with him in worship. 
Mm -hmm. Grab a psalm. David's been there. <laughs> David's been there. Mm -hmm. And you not know. be afraid to acknowledge that we made a mistake um, and tr try to deny to ourselves that we did something that maybe was wrong and go to the Lord and ask, you know, say, that, um, how can I experience what I chose to do for the, the good of me and um, bringing mm -hmm. myself back to you? Exactly. Yep. Um, okay, so the, read the next one, if you would. He wants us to have a revelation of who we are in Christ and how we are to operate in a kingdom mindset. Right. We need a kingdom mindset. And I got to tell you, in Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, I have no idea what goes on in heaven. I can get a glimpse, but you know what? I have the Holy Spirit that can t teach me to have that. Yeah, and that's been, I, I'm sure I've said this before in a podcast, but that's been a huge barometer for me over um, over the years of stopping and saying, okay, am I in a kingdom mindset right now or an earthly mindset, Lord, right at that time? Yep. And, um, and many times something will pop up that helps me to make the right, right choice because you can just, you know, process through that and like, he said the Holy Spirit will slice through that real quick yep. if you ask. Right. And this is what I encouraged a friend of mine, um, and I encourage myself with this, and Mary and I, pay attention to your thoughts, pay attention what comes out of your mouth, mm -hmm. because it all has intention. Mm -hmm. And so you need to, we need to uh, filter. We need well, a big the filter. the thing is, one of the things for you and I, because you're very, you know, you, th you think out loud, I don't, but the the damage is the same. You can think inside. Um, mm -hmm. You can have thoughts inside that you're not speaking out and nobody knows it that are just as damaging as somebody that's speaking something right. out. So if you're a quiet person or somebody who, you know, who doesn't speak out, but there's turmoil, turmoil going on inside, that's another, um, another little barometer of Lord, am I thinking through this as a kingdom mindset or my own self right and never allow yourself to be abused ask god for help yeah okay so um how does our preloaded software impact us remember what that other pine uh, other podcast was about that so yeah. so remember it's going to have hopefully you'll you'll think of this through but it's going to have a huge impact on us right right it's it can skew many things for us right and it can so, I mean, like we said, some of the software is good. So some, it's like yeah. you don't, it doesn't mean that everything is bad. Right. And there's, there's, there's an interesting thing. There's a camp um, that would say, God does not speak to you outside of the Bible. We've talked about this before. I would be very, very, very careful about any prophecy from any person at all, um, period, because God has spoken through his word in, in prophecy. But does God speak to us personally, and does it match? And we can match that up with Scripture. Right. And he does speak to us personally. We have to have a relationship right. with, with, with him. And so be encouraged in that. So in, in the question that we always ask ourselves and how we pray after we do our Bible studies is how are we going to respond to God? How are we going to take this wonderful truth that Paul's trying to give us and respond to him? Right. How are we going to do that? Are you asking me that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just asking all of us, but. Yeah, I think that, you know, in so many areas of scripture where it talks about, about um, ears to hear or eyes to see um, and the, the process of walking his way um, is those three things the way i the way i approach it is is god please give me the eyes to see and the ears to hear what you want me to hear and then give me the strength through your power to walk it out exactly and every single one of us can be blinded by our own sin that we don't know we're participating in okay right. and maybe there's things that we don't want to give up and we need to ask them for help but we don't want to be blinded. And the Lord talks about that through the Gospels and all through um, the New Testament about how different groups are blinded. And it's because they've chosen against God's will. 
Well, yeah, and we I can we can all all look back. be that way. I mean, I can look back at you know twenty years ago. I was a Christian twenty years ago, and some of the things that I was blinded and part of that is like we said, sanctification. You're, you know, you you see things that you didn't see before because you didn't know know it. But um, we all are, if, even if we've been saved since we were ten years old. We in in our walk, we've been blinded in many ways, and we shouldn't be so proud to think that there's nothing that couldn't blind us because we we are exactly you know born again yep and that's our fear um so the other part is how will we be in him how will we take this the i think the this chapter is almost worth memorizing because it's such a tremendous promise and reminder and baruch would say the 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 um ancient fathers the fathers of Israel had all these wonderful promises and that we should think of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as promised people. God is a God that keeps promises. Well, here he is clearly showing us these promises he's given us. So they're worth memory. And how will we be blessed to do his will? We don't have to talk any more about this, but these are some of the questions that you could ask yourself in your Bible study Um, because this is a Bible study. That's exactly what we do. This is exactly how we do it. So um, we want you to be blessed. And um, since I have a blank screen and there's nothing there, it looks like we're done. done. Mm -hmm. But we would really like your input. Um, And again, if you could go on iTunes and Google Play and all the different places and just tell people that you really like our podcast YouTube say the same thing, like it, um, that drives it up. And um, um, I have to tell you that there are people that privately message us and tell us how much they appreciate it, and it absolutely makes our day. It, it really well, it does. does it's, it's, um, it's always good to hear feedback that, um, that you're pointing somebody to Christ or that, it, that they're um, being influenced by in a scriptural way, in a spiritual way, by our podcast. You know, I think that's uh, it. For me, it makes it uh, worth doing because I'm, you know, I always tend to be who wants to listen to me. You know, why should I do another podcast? Right. Um, And then you hear something like that and think, oh, that's right, because we're two average people who are just trying to love the Lord and, and learn scripture and it can be uh, encouragement to others who are trying to do the same thing, right? And, and if, we needed the enc- when we need the encouragement from the other people who are doing that, right? And it, and we're here for you guys um, that would like to learn more. I mean, and if you'd like to be encouraged in your marriage, in anything, we were here. Uh, we've been, we've been through it, a lot of it, yeah, a lot of things, yeah. So I'll pray us out this time, okay. Lord, we just thank you for your kingdom. We just thank you for your kind intention towards us. We thank you for the promises of in him. Lord, please help people with their Bible study. And thank you. Let us be about being um, and not to doing, uh, but let us to do your will. And so, Lord, we bless you and give you honor and give you glory because you deserve it. And you're so good to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Well, thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Thanks.